Welcome to Inside City Hall. I'm your host, Mayor Daryl Seymour, and today our first guests are two city employees. We have Senior Account Clerk, Carrie Bilby, and Community Development Specialist, Jacob Wilcock. Welcome, Jacob. Welcome, Carrie. Hi. Glad to have you. Today we're gonna to be talking about code enforcement issues as well as the Project Clean Suite. So let's start a little bit about code enforcement. A lot of times you know, we drive down the street, we see something that doesn't look quite right and sometimes it's there for a while and then eventually it goes away. How does that happen, Jacob? Well, our major complaints are debris, outdoor storage or inoperable vehicles. If you see something like that, um, you don't really like on your street, you can go ahead and you can, uh, there's several ways you can call in, a, you can express a complaint, you can call in um, Come on, you mean I can't go knock on my neighbor's door and tell him he's got to clean up the stuff? I mean, that, that would be the fastest, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be the fastest. That would be ideal. It may not um, be the safest, but... It's not always the safest. Uh, if you feel comfortable doing that, of course, go ahead and just ask him to do it. If, if not, uh, you, can, uh, you can call in or you can go on the city website. You can uh, email. There's a place in there where you can uh, send us an email about a complaint. And the process was all go and I'll try and make contact with if, if it's a homeowner or a tenant, let them know what the issue is, if there is an issue. Right. Um, and uh, I'll note the uh, violation. Um, that'll be our first contact. If I can't get a hold of anybody in any way, then I'll, I'll try and send a letter, notice a violation. Um, so that's usually our first contact, a verbal warning or uh, an informal notice. Right. Um, then it would go to a formal warning um, and if they still have not corrected the violation at that point, it would be cited into court. So it is a process, it takes time. Um, a formal notice is usually we give them 30 days to clean up, and an informal or um, verbal complaint about two weeks. Mm -hmm. So really the, the public can be the eyes and ears of the city mm -hmm. a lot of times. So if you see something that you don't think that is quite correct or, or look right, you do have you know, as a neighbor and to protecting your own values of your property, there is a process. Exactly, that's why it's there, is to protect your property value. Right. Uh, and we are a minimum, you know, we're not as strict as an HOA or, you know, CCNRs for your neighborhood. Right. But there is a minimum of property maintenance code that the um, residents need to comply with. Okay, that's fantastic. Uh, now, as soon as you notify them, you're gonna tell them what neighbor, you know, has did the complaint, <laughs> right? <laughs> No, we, yeah. we, we try our best not to, to keep it anonymous. Right. Um, if you don't want to express your name or your address or anywhere where you live, you don't have to, it's not, it's not required. Right, so and it doesn't have to be just your next door neighbor. It can be clear across town, something that you see that's unsightly and you want right. something done about it. We so. are, we're all together and trying to make our community look better and look nicer, so yeah, of course. Okay, and so after this goes on and on and they don't do anything, then that gets a little bit more strict uh, they're gonna be cited, there's gonna be fines to pay and things if they don't comply on their own tuition. There could be, or the judge okay. might uh, issue an abatement of nuisance where we, you know, we'd go in and correct it ourselves if we had to. Okay, yard sale signs. Uh, I'm gonna have a big yard sale Saturday. I'm gonna go out there and put my signs up and we all drive through town and we see those signs. So is that sometimes a problem? Yes, it, it definitely can be. Usually on Mondays after the weekend, weekends are common for yard sales, and you'll see signs on all the street corners all over town. Um, <clears throat> first of all, yard sales, um, yard sales in particular are only allowed three times a year and can last up to three days. So uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday yard sale, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday yard sale uh, usually works. And each day you need to you, you put up signs, you know, make sure they're not in pedestrian right away on the sidewalk or anything like that. Um, you put them out in the morning and pick them up in the evening. You don't leave them out, and then, especially when your yard sale's done, come Monday, right. make sure they're already they're all picked up and everything's cleaned up. Uh, it helps in making this keeping the city looking good. And we don't like yard sale signs that have been there for a month's time that it's rained on them and you mm -hmm. know doesn't look nice. <laughs> it's part of being responsible is if you're going to have exactly. that sale and you know take some of your profits and at least put some gas and go pick up your signs. You know, right. I think that's something that we can all improve upon in the community of just picking up after ourselves. And put the date and the and the address of where okay. your of your of your cell is. It really helps those who want to get to your cell or so it that's good to differentiate. Mm -hmm. Some of the other things that we have, I mean, we've been blessed recently here with some rain and, and that's fantastic, but fire hazards is probably one of the, the big threats that we have around homes. 
Uh, we're fortunate to live in the mountains and the trees, but one of the unfortunate thing is we have the byproduct. We have uh, those pine needles that, that sometimes can pile up. And how important is it for a person to to keep their house clean from from that? Well, it's very important, especially if you live in a in a heavily wooded area. And um, one of the safest things you can do is just create a defensible space around your home. Um, and if you see something that concerns you have a fire hazard, we get a lot around the summer, July, when it gets really dry, we'll get a lot of possible fire hazard complaints. The first thing that I do is I'll usually will contact the fire department. I can't continue any violation, you know, unless the fire department or fire marshal deems it a fire hazard. At that point, um, we can progress forward with, as a, with it as a violation. Um, other than that, you know, I, my hands are tied unless the fire department deems it a fire hazard. Right, and things there. I mean, it's just that defensible space around mm -hmm. your home. It's, it may not be a forest fire. It may be a spark from a barbecue or something and mm -hmm. gives you a few extra minutes if you've done something to protect. Yep. One of the things that's happening a lot, we see a lot of these uh, sheds that are being sold on the street. Uh, they can be placed anywhere. They can sh pop up overnight. And I think it's like anything kind of go into when do you have to have a permit to put a shed up and what are some of the, the code enforcements or requirements that a person needs to know before they, they build a shed or have one of these erected on their site? Um, any shed over, 140, over 144 square feet needs to be permitted. You need to come into the building department and with a set of plans and where it's gonna be located on your property, um, how it's gonna be built, um, it needs to be on a permanent footings. Anything over 144 square feet needs to be permitted. Anything under that, we do complimentary shed permits and we recommend that you still come in. Um, those are over the counter, they're free permits. Um, we just like to know where it is and your shed needs to meet proper setbacks. Um, they all need to be at least 20 feet away from any street side property line. Um, um, we also do the same for fence. Fences, if you want to build up, put up a fence, we do a complimentary fence permit where it's no charge, but we like to know that it does meet our zoning codes and that it is legal and won't cause any problems. Right. It'll be safe. I mean, it's one of those things when you have something that's been built structurally, you're thinking, well, I don't need it, but you may sell that home in 10 years or 15 years and, and the only recourse the person, not really recourse, but the only evidence the person knows is whether or not that shed was built correctly or not, is if there's a permit on file. Exactly, we get that often, someone wanting to sell their home and not being able to do it properly because some insurance company doesn't want to sell it because there's not a permit on that addition or that shed. Right. Well, you know, we appreciate the, the city, and, and I, I fell under that. I wanted to put a shed up this last year, and I had to go get my permit. I had to, <laughs> you know, make sure that we put it in the right place and, and did everything according to, to code to make that happen. And looking back, I'm glad I did. It's one of those things that it is now, you know, has a, a more of a value possibly to a future buyer or somebody on the property. So it is a very important thing that we have. Carrie, you are going to tell us how to get rid of all that clutter, all that stuff that we have around our house and in our project clean suite. Does that mean that I can hire you out to come over to my house and just uh, go to work and, Unfortunately, and do all that? No. Gosh dang it. No, this is our 17th annual project clean sweep this year. So it is still a very strong program. Oh. Um, basically, we have a couple of different programs. We are extending one of them. It's the green waste dump. We're gonna allow that for two weeks this year. It's gonna start uh, May 26th and run through May 30th, and then it's gonna kick up again on June 1st and go through June 6th. All the green waste you have, bagged, unbagged, can be taken out to Dirty Deeds okay. off Highway 77, and you just need to show proof that you pay refuse um, on your city utility bill, and they'll let you dump for free as many times as you need. Now, when you get the Dirty Deeds, if you have it bagged, do you have to unbag it? Or? My understanding is no, he no. will take care of all of that. All of that. So he, he would prefer it to be unbagged, but mm -hmm. we know there's a lot of residents who don't have the ability to safely transport unbagged green right. waste. So if you need to bag it to keep it safe in transport, he will take care of all of that. Okay, now let's kind of help people understand how to get to Dirty Deeds. It's not the easiest place to find. It is but, not. But it can be found. Uh, I've been there and, and it's a great place. It sure is closer than, than any place else in town. So do you have that in, 
address or how to get there? Are you familiar how to get out there? We do. The address is 890 Cinder Pit Road. Uh, if you're familiar with Perkins Cinders, mm -hmm. it is back up there off Highway 77. Um, you're going to turn on First Knoll and then basically follow the signs. Um, you'll go past the Cinder Pit and you'll, you'll see them right there. Right. Um, just keep going Just and keep you'll, going. See, you'll, you'll see, see the it. pit off to your left and yep. keep going. Then you'll see a big building and just yes, keep going. Just keep and going. And he's got there. some signs right. going along the road directing you that way. That's great. You know, that, that can save people a lot of money being Absolutely. able to just uh, dump that for, for free. Absolutely. And so what else is happening during our project cleanup that that we can take? I mean, that's what's going to be picked up. Is this something in addition to what we can put down on our property that the city will come it, up and pick up? It is starting June 8th through June 11th. We're also going to be having our bulky item pickup. Furniture, appliances, whatever you have, if you get it out by the street on your normal trash day during that week, our streets crew will come around and pick that up for you and, and haul it off okay. and dispose of it. Um, they won't take, unfortunately, any hazardous materials, um, construction materials they won't take, but any of your other household bulky items. We have a lot of people with refrigerators that go out, freezers. Mm -hmm. They will all be environmentally um, taken care of before disposal, but our crews will pick those up and they'll take care of that for you. Okay, and what is that date again? On, on the date for the pickup? bulky item is Monday, June 8th through Thursday, June 11th. Okay. Um, we are asking residents have their items out by at least 7 a.m on their normal trash day. Crews are gonna start fairly early to make sure they can get everybody picked up. Okay, and then the dates again for taking stuff out to Dirty Deeds. Dirty Deeds is gonna be from Tuesday, May 26th through Saturday, May 30th, 8 to 4 p.m. every day. And then again from June 1st through June 6th, okay. 8 to 4. So they're gonna let you go two weeks there. Two weeks there, that's um, great. They elected to extend that a week mainly because taking you know everything out to the transfer station it does pose its own fire hazard having that much green waste sitting there so dirty deeds has the ability to carefully take care of it and keep it safe and it's just better all around that's fantastic right what else do we have about the only other thing you can do during that week is if you prefer to go to the transfer station and unload your unwanted items you can do that uh, monday june 8th through saturday june 12th from 8 to 3 30 or saturday june 13th from 8 to 2 p.m at the lone pine transfer station again they're going to ask to see your utility bill showing you pay refuse inside the city limits and you can dump for free as many times as you need to uh, okay. during that week that's great so this is kind of a combination of how we can you know get code compliant mm -hmm. if we have some debris and we have some things setting around our our house. I know I got a pile of branches that I've been cutting mm -hmm. and raking up and, and getting ready to, to haul off. So that's going to be great. Uh, but it also just uh, those things that make us a little more fire wise and things going forward. You know, it's, it's one of the great things that a lot of times the city doesn't offer that service is something that you just have to figure out how to do it or hire somebody to come and do it. And, and it can be quite expensive to haul things it, out, out of your, your It home is, and, and, and the there. easiest way to do that is, is making sure if, if you're going to participate in the bulky item pickup, your items are in bags. It's, it's not loose garbage. Right. Um, it, it helps a lot of times the hardest part about code enforcement is not having the resources to do something about it. So this is a great time of year to give a resource to some of our residents to take care of those issues. That's great. And Jacob, I, I know that you give up some of your Saturdays just to be out because you can catch people more at home and you mm -hmm. can see some of these violations. And we appreciate that because it's uh, that's where you're meeting with the people and being able to talk. And, and we live in a community where people a lot of times will, will comply just with a little reminder mm -hmm. and so it's fantastic is there anything else you guys want to share of anything that's happening i think we well covered it all right that sounds great well stay tuned for the next segment of inside city hall where we will have dave ham the recreation supervisor and lisa roberts the grants manager for the city of Sholo. thanks for being with us today thank you Appreciate thanks it. thank no you problem. Welcome back to Inside City Hall. Now we have Lisa Robertson, the Grants Manager, and Dave Hamm, the Recreation Supervisor for the City of Sholo. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Welcome, Dave. Thank you for having us. Glad to have you today. You're just going to ham it up, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. There exactly. we go. Good. Lisa and, and everything. Tell us a little bit about you, Lisa, where you came from. How long, I know you've been with the city just a short time. And, I have. And just share a little bit of your background. 
Well, um, I'm a native Arizonan, or Zoni, um, and I recently moved here from San Diego, uh, where I was a director for um, many social service programs in the San Diego area for the Salvation Army. Um, and I have, you know, being a native of Arizona, I've been visiting the White Mountains for ever, and um, I've always wanted to locate here permanently, and so I had an opportunity to do that as a grants manager. Um, it's kind of my area of expertise, and um, so here I am. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you. We Thank really you. Do. Dave, tell us about yourself a little bit. Well, I consider myself a, a Calizonia. I grew up in California <laughs> and been in Arizona for my most of my adult life anyway. And uh, uh, just been involved with the YMCA organization a, a lot uh, when I was younger, and both as a member as well as an employee there in diff several different ways. And then I've worked for several different municipalities as well. And uh, in the way of recreation, I feel I have the best job here at the city. I mean, the recreation job here as a recreation supervisor, my job is essentially just to make sure everyone that lives up here has a good time. Have a good time and, and have fun. Yeah, right? and I get to have a good time and have fun with them. So <laughs> I feel very blessed to be able to do that. It's such a beautiful place to be up here and mm -hmm. so many great, wonderful outdoor activities and things to do and the beautiful outdoors up here. It's, it's really a great situation. Uh -huh. That's great. So two Californians transplanted to Arizona. That's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So Lisa, tell us how grants uh, help the city, uh, why they're important. I know we have had, you know, we probably basically build our airport through, you know, aviation grants. It's been great help. But, but what are some of the grants that you're aware of that the city has received and, and what are some of the grants that you're working on now? Well, just the short time that I've been here, the, the primary grant that I've been working on is the uh, transit grant um, through the Arizona Department of Transportation. Um, that grant we've had in place for many years, and it does provide um, most of the funding uh, for our public transit system through um, Sholo, uh, Pine Top Lakeside, um, and then we have a commute our commuter route that goes um, through Taylor, Snowflake, and to Holbrook. So um, that's pretty exciting. Transit mm -hmm. is new to me, um, and I've really kind of gotten in, you know, kind of into it, uh, if you will. Um, and I think part of the reason why it does is because there is there's such a need um, for this system up here and my social service background kind of translates I think well into the transit system because many of the people who utilize that service um, you know have no other way to get to where they need to go whether they're disabled or what have you so it kind of kind of feeds that social right. services um, need for me um, cool. Sometimes we don't realize how much the federal government really impacts some of the yes, services absolutely. that we have. And this is definitely one with our public transportation, which, I mean, it's an award-winning transportation. There's very few communities our size that has as absolutely. good a service that we have in our community. Yeah. yeah. When I first came up here and I saw um, just, you know, the type of transit system that we had up here in this small community, I was really impressed. Um, coming from San Diego, a large metropolitan area, um, and in the social service populations that I worked with, transit was a big part of of what they required to, to get to their jobs and to, you know, do their grocery shopping mm -hmm. and, you know, ba meet their basic needs. Um, and it was difficult to do. Uh, I mean, it would take people, you know, an hour and a half to three hours to get to their job one way because the transit system just didn't meet the community's needs like it does here. So I was quite impressed with what I saw when I came here. That's great. Dave, some of the recreation things that we have uh, that we've recently got through with, I guess, our city barbecue yeah. throwdown, that, that was a fantastic huge event, day. Huge event. I mean, we had a, we had representative from, from all of the neighboring states. We had teams f far back as Missouri show up to per participate and compete in their barbecue. And so a great group of, of people that came up and did it. Everyone from the community came out with open arms to see what it was all about and to taste some of the most amazing food I've ever eaten in my life. It was <laughs> very, very, very good. Um, we had some bands playing that were fabulous and, and it was just a great time. Mother Nature cooperated with us so the weather was perfect. It was a great time just to be out in a wonderful grass setting and just enjoy the camaraderie of our fellow community, yeah. What's an idea that you have maybe if you've given it some time that you'd maybe like to introduce uh, you know, to our area that maybe we're currently not doing but, or something that maybe we could be do better? You know, just today I was talking to some teenagers and um, you know, I think that that's a, an area that uh, we can do a better job in is to do 
different programs and different things. So I'm going to be working with the local high schools and, and work and see what we can get more kids involved with. Uh, at that age group, it's such a, an impressionable age and it's such an opportunity that I think we're falling a little bit short on at this time. So we're just open-minded, not a specific program, but just more focused on a specific age group mm -hmm. to make some programs for. Okay. You know, some of that, you know, leads into some other activities that we have. The, the school's talking a little bit, possibly a four-day, you know, school week. If that happens, do we have more activities going on in the community and things for, for our youth and yeah. stuff there? And we're really uh, actively involved with the school districts here. So right. working with them hand-in-hand hand and providing the recreation is, is key. So now maybe we can get Lisa to write some grants for us <laughs> that go. we could have after school Absolutely. hours or something like that. Yeah. And this is kind of how it works together, finding mm -hmm. a need of something that we have coming up to, to go. So let's go there a little bit. What type of grants do you see or could be available for something like that? Well, I think that the more the grants department um, becomes linked with um, the recreation department and other uh, departments uh, throughout the city, um, there's a lot of opportunity, uh, you know, with grant funding out there. You got to find the right opportunity, right. Um, and so it's just identifying really what um, that need is uh, at a deeper level, so that we can or I can go out and do the research to get um, appropriate grants to fit the need. Um, that, that's kind of a key element uh, when um, researching grants is that you match them uh, correctly. Right. Yeah. Have you seen the availability of grants uh, available shrink at all or is it still they're out there you just have to have the expertise to they get them? They are out there. Um, they, it, it's, it's hard to say. I would say that in certain areas grant funding has declined. Uh, and in other areas, um, it has increased. I think when you're talking about youth programs, um, you know, uh, high-risk uh, youth, uh, low-income families, those kinds of funding opportunities are still uh, still out there. It's a little bit more difficult to get um, funding for um, sometimes more uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. and, and um, you know, arts and uh, creative uh, things that uh, everyone is kind of vying for at the same time. It's become a very competitive um, uh, playing field for people who are out there looking for money to right. you know, support their projects. So Dave, we've got some events coming up. I know in the city we've got our, our project uh, clean up here, our day of service. We've got a Memorial Day uh, softball tournament coming up. What's your role in those activities? Again, I, we have a wonderful team here at the city of people who have made a passion to create recreation for everybody that lives here. Um, my role is just kind of to oversee it all, uh, make sure, see things through, um, make sure that we're providing the best service that we possibly can uh, for the amount of dollars that we have to, to spend on recreation here at the city. Um, the Memorial Day softball tournament that you mentioned is a fabulous event. Uh, it, one of the things that's so great is we bring so many teams from out of town and from out other areas into our area. And that, that provides so much more for this community than just a few teams to play softball to go and watch. I mean, they're staying in our hotels, they're going to our restaurants, they're going to our grocery stores, and it really is bringing just a huge uh, asset to our city, bringing all these people up. And who knows, some of these people might even become, move up to Sholo someday, and, and that kind of thing. It exposes people to our community, and yeah. I think that's one of the greatest things we have is through our recreation, mm -hmm. through grants, through working to make our community better. Uh, for us as public being more receptive to visitors and just showcasing ourselves a little bit better. It all takes money. It all takes uh, good coordination and projects, but we appreciate what you guys do in, in the community and it's great to have you on board here as, as part of the city of Sholo and we look forward to some great grants and some great activities. Yeah, so exciting. Lisa, thank you for being here today. Thank you, I appreciate it. And Dave, Pleasure's appreciate mine. it. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on Inside City Hall today. If you have questions you'd like answered, please call them at the City Hall, 532-4061, and we'll answer them here on the show. Thanks for watching and have a great day.